Hello uh, everybody, this is Jeff with Area 52 Pro Diesel Repair in uh, New Plymouth, Idaho. Wanted to uh, make a video and talk a little bit about this 916. Namely wanted to uh, focus on the uh, transmission. I wanted to um, make this video because when I was uh, looking into buying one of these and I found out what kind of transmission was, I had... Um, really no clue anything about it it is a caterpillar made model 70 7155 it is essentially i guess um considered to be a semi-automatic as you can see um you basically got uh one two three four all the way up to 16 means a 16 speed there's no clutch pedal essentially it 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 operates a little bit like a it is a manual transmission it has air solenoids to move the shift forks around it's um it's a lot like the i guess you can consider it to be like the Eaton auto shift um basically way ahead of its time but I think it's a pretty cool transmission. I actually really love it. Enjoy buying it. Or excuse me, enjoy driving it, I guess. Apparently from the research I've done, they're actually pretty uh, pretty stout uh, transmissions. Um, the biggest downside of them is uh, <clears throat> you don't find... Um, hard, really hard to find parts, and it's really hard to find uh, anybody that uh, really knows anything about them. When I first went to a cat dealership, when I had this truck in Wisconsin, um, they didn't even know what the hell it was. So they obviously didn't have anybody that knew how to work on it. But essentially, it has a, a front clutch pack that would resemble what you would see in an automatic. And it is um, held in, it, it, it's, it's clamped together with spring pressure, and it's released with air pressure. Then it has a rear clutch pack, the same basically as the front except for its opposite it's held open with uh, spring pressure and it's held tight with air pressure and so when you go to make a shift it disengages both clutches makes the shift and then re-engages it all does it real quick um, first thing you do is you know you you push and you I'm pretty low on air all right, so I got the air pressure uh, built back up, but push that in, that supplies the transmission, sets it all up. I'm pretty sure, I don't know what it's it's doing all that. That's what it sounds like when it shifts. See, you can move this over here to, you know, you can move it up into one. It's not gonna do anything until you let it go. And that's what it does um, when it shifts. Now, because this thing holds the air or the air pressure basically holds the rear clutches in, you know, <clears throat> holds them tight. Um, there's a chance that you could have a low air situation and you could end up slipping those clutches. That actually happened to the first transmission that I had in this truck. Those rear clutches were, um, they were just, they were slipping. They were no good. I couldn't, couldn't find them. I basically had to, uh, swap out and get a whole new, um, transmission from a government surplus so what i did is i installed this gauge right here as you see we're in neutral right now there's no air pressure there watch i move it over to gear number one and then you start that way i can tell you know and i got this thing moved up a little bit it probably only wants like you know 70 pounds or something i think it said in the manual but I wanted it up a little bit higher, got a little more air pressure. And as you move the gears up, let's, let's move this up here to, I think, like, say number eight. Yeah, see, here's gear number 10. And you can see the pressure's a lot lower. Um, and if, if you get all the way to 16, the air pressure's going to be right up in here about between about 30 35 um that's the lowest because i guess according to the manual what it says is 
you know, it just doesn't need as much air pressure. I actually, like I said, I moved it up. Um, if anybody has any questions on how to do that, I can, uh, you can write me a message. I can let you know how to, how to move up that air pressure. I just wanted more air pressure because I just felt like I just didn't want to have any chance of those clutches slipping. So basically when I was looking at these trucks and I found a few on auction that I wanted to get and, um, you know, I was like, okay, how do you drive it? Um, and I got a, a service manual and, and an operating manual from Gen Sales, I think it was. Actually, it's a pretty damn good manual. You know, it goes, talks about all different kinds of troubleshooting for these, these things. And, um, like I said, because my first transmission, I had, um, I had a problem with it. Um, you know, actually on the door, this thing has written bad transmission on it. So, and I'm the first owner since, uh, Uncle Sam's trucking company, um, decided to let it go. So, anyways, um, you know, and there was a few videos out there that had, had some guys driving it, but nobody was talking or actually explaining how how you actually drive it. Because I wanted to know, you know, what do you do with the go pedal and all that kind of stuff. Well, if, essentially what I found found out is you actually just, you operate your gas pedal just as if you would shifting any truck. You know, I mean, obviously if you're, you know, shifting a 13 speed, you are not going to, um, push in the clutch and move your, sh your gear shift lever and not take your foot off the gas because it's, you know, your engine's going to rev up. This is the same exact thing. And so, um, basically what I'll, I'll try to attempt to do is, you know, hopefully we'd be able to, you guys be able to hear me as I'm explaining exactly how to how to make this um work but um you know we'll we'll drive it a little bit and i'll kind of explain a little bit because like i said i was looking for videos i just want to know exactly how do you drive this thing because it was you know i've driven driven truck a lot um i've driven you know all of them super tens regular tens 13s 18s five and four tw twin stick the mac twin stick i've driven all of those but this was um, pretty new to me, and it's actually a little bit uh, when you've been driving truck all all day long, and you go hop into something like this, and you're uh, feeling down in here with your foot for the clutch pedal when you come up to a stop sign. But anyways, actually, right down there um, where my my foot is, there used to be a um, just a steel uh, foot pedal for the. Um, jake break and i don't know i just didn't really like it and so i um basically just just wired in a, a pull switch right here that operates a jake break i mean obviously you got high low and medium over here but um you you would leave that set where you 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 had it and then you just would push down on the pedal when you needed the jake break and i don't know i just I just don't like that. Um, don't like sitting there if you're going down a hill for, you know, I mean, we're in Idaho. We have mountain ranges sometimes for <clears throat> 10 miles long in some areas and you're sitting here holding this, holding this, holding this all the way down. I just don't like it. So that's why that, that switch is there. It still operates the same way. I push down on the gas over here and it cancels the Jake brake. So, and same thing at idle. I can pop this thing out and it won't, won't shut the engine off. You know, when you're when you're idling all right well hopefully you guys can hear me um go ahead and we'll we'll drive this a little bit um got air pressure you know coming up um this thing takes a lot of air to shift and move around like a yard and stuff doesn't do you know seem to be too bad i drove this truck all the way from wisconsin to idaho um and so I've got to know it quite a bit, quite quite a lot. Anyways, um, you know, you want to have, always make sure you have a good air system and doesn't leak because these things, um, like I said, they run on air. If you lose air pressure, it's like the transmission's in neutral. You wouldn't want to have that happening going down a hill. Um, so, and I actually moved my pressure, my D2 governor up to about, uh, it stops about 135. Um, just to make sure I have this truck's got about five air tanks on it 
I want to add a couple more. A lot of check valves because I've had about three of the tanks off of it and was still able to release the parking brakes and put this in gear. So essentially, all right, so we'll go, I'm going to put it right here. I'm going to start out in um, four. Sometimes these things are a little finicky, you know, like I said, we're in gear. So basically what, what happens now is you just rev the engine up and it just kind of just takes off just like a regular clutch. And then when you shift, you're just going to move this and let off the gas. I'm trying to do this also while holding the phone and doing the steering wheel, but we'll make another shift here. And as soon as it's in gear, you just go on again. We'll just do it again. Hopefully you can kind of hear the RPM a little bit. Um, when I get down here to the flat. Um, now downshifting. What I like to do is I'm just gonna basically just start accelerating. There's a nice downshift, didn't rock me back too much. Uh, they don't really have that good of a turning radius, even as short as these are, but here I'll have you watch the cat. That was probably a little bit Basically what happened there is I, I skipped two gears. That's the other thing with this thing, is it's got a, it's, it's got a locker. Um, let me see if I, I'll shut it off here. This thing will, I guess it's not gonna do it while it's here, but basically you put this thing in one and you can go up to three and then five and this thing won't let you do it. Um, up until you get to about about gear number 10 and then you can only do one at a time unless you pick up on this and you can move it any different direction but we'll see if I can if it got to be so we're in gear it won't let me, wouldn't let me push up any farther than that right there. But if you, if you, you know, basically like when I come down, come to a stop sign, you know, I'm going to be probably like in 13th gear or something. It's a really low gear truck. And, um, you know, I'll just pick this thing up as I'm coming to the stop, drop it down. Still nothing's going to happen. And then basically when I get just about basically stopped, then I let it fall into place and let it do the shit. So, so anyways, that's that. And um, there I skipped two gears. That was just one gear there. See, like right now, it's not going to let me go down at all. It stops you in this two gears right here. So you pick this thing up, drop it over the neutral, and then you, you got two reverse speeds. So now we're in reverse. As you can see, we're backing up. Anyways, um, hopefully that, you know, it's it's really difficult to make videos and stuff like that you know I really need to have somebody else holding the phone and you know all that kind of stuff but hopefully you get basically the right idea but you know if you get one of these you're gonna have to just practice with it but at least you have a good idea but if you get you know get the get the two manuals um show you how to how to do it but um that's actually the uh last time that this truck is going to be driven like that because I am stretching the frame another uh, six feet I'm putting these 
air ride rear axles from this truck and that uh, lift axle there is going to go on this truck and then um, these are three 390 gear ratio these these here are like 630 6.33s or something like that. they're they're freaking low so i'll have to put those axles on there and then i'm going to have to re-gear the uh the front axle so that um uh it matches the 390s because I, I i still want to have six wheel drive in this truck and um you know it's a big project but you know i paid seven thousand for this truck it's only got 30,000 miles on it, and the 855 uh, Big Cam 400 it's in there. Um, it's, it's a 79 truck, but the it's been had had the engine replaced in it, which means it could have had the odometer replaced. I mean, you, you can't really tell, but this truck was in immaculate shape besides the transmission when I got it. Um, put a new transmission in it and uh, a few things here and there, and I drove this truck just like it is it had a fifth wheel plate on it before and i pulled this semi van 53 foot semi trailer with all of my furniture and a car in, inside of there when i moved back home here to idaho and uh that thing ran flawlessly I actually got about five miles to the gallon and that was driving about 60 miles an hour the whole way at uh, 2100 rpm it's not the greatest thing to do to your engine but um son of a gun did completely awesome i figured there's there's i gotta put this thing to work gotta get do some stuff with it and uh because i want to end up buying it but i needed to buy a truck and i already so i already got one so here we are but um you know the other thing about these things they come um yeah i, I know i've got some missing lug nuts on here i had this wheel off of here because i wanted to see if um these 22 and a half rims from this trailer would fit over this hub and they actually won't um this brake drum back in here is is too big and so i bought these 24 and a half rims and they work on there but um, these are actually 24s um as you can see upside down but the 11 are 24s and they're split rims and i'm getting rid of that i'm not going to screw with the split rims but get rid of those and put 24 and a half. I'm going to put low pros on here because the suspension, especially up here in the front, is pretty tall. And uh, 390 gears, I think. That's plenty high geared enough, but we'll find out, you know. But it's kind of a bummer that it's so low geared because everything is all set up for this being tough. You know, Hend Hendrickson walking beam suspension. There was actually three more Leafs in here, and I took them out because I needed to lower this thing down because with this semi van trailer on the back of here, I was at uh, 14 feet, three inches and I needed to drop it down. And I was managed to be, took out uh, three leaves and I managed to get about just a little over two inches. So I was only one inch over what you're legally supposed to. And actually in Wisconsin and Minnesota, you're only allowed to be at 13.6 anyhow so i was way illegal when i went back through them but anyway since i've uh owned this truck i've gotten to know it uh pretty well i've had it for about a year now and i've uh done a lot of little different things with it and got more to do with it so if anybody um you know has any questions because aside from the transmission these are basically just a, a regular truck except for a hell of a lot cooler than than most of them but you know i really like them and i'd like to find another another couple of them i want just a regular 915 that uh same exact truck with this just without the winch and um it's not six wheel drive they're they're higher geared they're four something um so they i think they do about 75 or so down the down the freeway but um I like one of those but this same exact engine and transmission comes in the they have a like an m917 18 those are different configurations um because some of these trucks had a little bit longer uh frame and they had another uh lift axle right in this area but they all have a winch but then they have the the same engine and transmission all the way up into the m920s now 
if you uh, Google and look up what an M920 is, it's probably one of the most badass trucks that uh, that they have besides any of the Oshkoshes, but it looks a lot different than this. But uh, they're pretty damn cool looking. So anyways, if anybody's got any questions, just shoot me a message or um, my phone number's there on the very first few seconds when I showed my business card there. You're welcome to give me a call. So anyways, have a good day.